Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here in the Carpathian Basin of Europe. Hi, Amarjeet. Welcome, members. This is a members chat class. Everybody is welcome to watch, and we are focusing on IELTS reading, using uh, reading passages from our academic uh, exams. But of course, for the general version of the test, your reading section three is very, very similar to the academic reading passages. So um, it's great to study. And if you can do a great job in the academic reading, you will certainly do a good job in your general uh, version of the test as well. Hi, Parmar. Hi, Beg John. Good to see you in class. Uh, for Dovs, um, today, of course, we have a new passage uh, for you as well, presented by our websites, uh, aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Check us out there. We're always expanding, adding new materials. We have lots and lots of materials to help you. gieltshelp.com for the general IELTS. We have six practice exams on each of those websites, uh, over 100 hours of video lessons and a fully interactive course with strategies and tips. This is the academic web portal here, aehelp.com. Click that big red button to join. And this is the general uh, site here. Again, green background, click that big red button to join us there. Of course, we have apps that are supported and connected to the websites. Academic IELTS Help app connects to aehelp.com and General IELTS Help connects to gieltshelp.com. So definitely check those out as well. And if you have questions, uh, students, about our courses or about the exam, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. I will gladly uh, answer your questions to the best of my capacities. Uh, lots of reading today, everyone. So today I kind of made it a reading day. Uh, so we have reading in this class, and then we'll have a 30 minute break, and then another passage where everybody can join the chat. So lots and lots of reading. Of course, with reading, you're always practicing your listening skills as well in these classes. And when you read with me, you're practicing your speaking skills also. So make sure to uh, read and enunciate, okay? So read, and whenever possible, read aloud, okay? Reading aloud is a really important uh, practice skill to uh, improve uh, your learning, okay? It's in a very effective mode of learning, hearing yourself, moving the muscles of your mouth, your tongue, so make sure to do that often. Hi, Carolina. Hi, Hassan. Hi, Bumi. Hi, Amarjeet again. Good to see many more members in the class. Let's get cracking. Let's get right into this. So this is the reading passage for today. This is coming from our ninth exam. We are adding four more new uh, practice exams. Uh, based on the uh, Cambridge Book 1415, so the latest exam standards. Um, and uh, this is going to be our academic uh, reading section for exam nine. And we are into passage two today. So we're looking at passage two. And of course, uh, we always start by reading the title and then doing a bit of thinking about the title, okay? So read with me here, uh, students. Steve Wozniak, the visionary you've never heard of. It's kind of interesting, okay? Uh, many members are probably realizing that the title to an essay, once you get to university, is kind of like your super hook. It should uh, summarize your whole essay and make the reader interested about what you're writing. So uh, Steve Wozniak, the visionary you've never heard of, what could that be? So what do you think this passage will be about um, just based on this title? So you can always get some ideas and definitely I got a few ideas when I read this title. Uh, what comes to mind? 
when you read this. Steve Wozniak, the visionary you've never heard of. Of course, it helps to know the word visionary here. If you think of vision, visionary, you might come up with what that word means. So what does, what does the title mean here? So what kind of information do you think of and visualize when you read this title? Okay, give me your answers. I'd love to hear um, what you come up with. Okay. All right. So Parmar says the CEO of the Apple company. Okay, uh, maybe if you know that information, Parmar. Uh, Mustafa says maybe some kind of an inventor. Uh, Musafir says somebody who invented something great, definitely. So a person who invented something great. Sure. Uh, Hassan says some kind of a pioneer in a specific field. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, perhaps a pioneer in a specific field. Yeah, uh, students, the word pioneer that Hassan is using here very well, it's an explorer. Okay, another way to say pioneer is explorer, somebody who explores and is the first to do it. So if you go to a part of the world where nobody has gone to and you discover what is there, you are a pioneer. And you can do that physically by pioneering. It's a verb as well, pioneering new places. Um, or you can pioneer ideas and inventions as well. Okay. All right, um, good. So I think a lot of you have thought about the word uh, visionary, but again, don't forget that the title is a bit more detailed. It says, you've never heard of. Why does it say you've never heard of? Why do you think it would say you've never heard of? So think about that as well, okay? So what does this mean? You've never heard of. Why would the author write that? Okay, so think of each uh, element of the title, okay, because that will help you to better understand. Yeah, so they're maybe less famous, they're not so popular, okay. Okay, uh, not in the limelight, okay. Uh, the limelight is that spotlight that you see on uh, singers and actors when they're on the stage. Okay, that's called the limelight. Uh, Beck John says somebody who is behind other inventors, a person behind other inventors or overshadowed by other people. Yeah. Exactly. So maybe there's some reason that we don't know about this person, why they don't appear to be so famous. Good. So that's great. That's what you want to think about before you begin reading this. Okay. So some inventor made some big contribution, a pioneer, but for some reason, not very famous. Okay. So we have some paragraphs here all the way to G and then we look at the questions. So here it says, reading passage two has seven paragraphs. This is a very popular question type, so we include it into these exams. So reading passage two has seven paragraphs, A to G, uh, which paragraph contains the following information? So you see more and more of these kinds of questions, students, that are created where simply skimming and scanning is just not possible. It wastes too much time. Okay, uh, so we can read this. All of this information is somewhere in the passage, okay? So information about Wozniak's youth. Paraphrase it. So uh, background to uh, Wozniak's 
childhood years. Okay, so many of the members who are in these classes regularly now, uh, you should be getting quite familiar and fluent uh, with this kind of paraphrasing. Um, a stock price skyrockets. Okay, so a stock uh, value um, increases very quickly. Uh, learning from another company's technology, uh, gaining information from a different business's um, development. Okay, the origins of Apple in telephone technology. So the start of Apple's mobile technologies. Uh, Steve Jobs steals from Wozniak. Uh, Steve Jobs loots <laughs> from Wozniak. Okay, so there is some information there. Again, paraphrasing. Uh, now here we have complete the notes below. So this is uh, sentence completion. Again, we read this type of question because it's all in the passage. Okay, so uh, here we go. Steve Wozniak's beginnings. Apple is one of the biggest companies in the world. Though Steve something has been the face of the company, it is actually Wozniak who provided a lot of the engineering and something ability. Wozniak was born at a time decades before the boom in San Jose, an area which would come to be nicknamed something. Wozniak got his start in technology in the 1970s by making a device called something that would allow for free long distance calls. The profit from these devices was necessary so he could start something, the company that would change the world soon after. Okay, all right. Interesting. And then we have a little bit of multiple choice here, number 24. How much money did Steve Jobs unfairly take from Steve Wozniak? $2,150, $700, $2,500, or $350. The choices you don't need to really read, that, that might confuse you. Just focus on the question, okay? And again, you might want to change this into a statement. So uh, Steve Jobs... Uh, cheated Wozniak out of this amount of money. Okay, so that's how I would paraphrase this in my mind. Okay, yeah, I'm glad you're going to find this uh, reading interesting, Carolina. Okay, here we go. Um, so, Let's keep going. Here's a sentence completion. So complete each sentence with the correct ending. So we have two uh, sentence beginnings and we have five endings, which means three of those are wrong. So let's leave those answers and let's just look at the questions. In just a few years after the time of its founding, Wozniak's something. There may not be an exact link from Wozniak's contributions to Apple to the company today. Okay. So definitely Apple is involved here. And that's it. And then passage three, the city of a thousand windows uh, will be next class after this one in about an hour, a little bit more. So um, we have some good ideas. Now we know that Steve Wozniak uh, was probably a key person uh, in the world of computers, computer technology, and in the making of the world's most valuable company known as Apple. Did everybody get that? So, Bekjan, Parmar, Carolina, Ferdobs, did you get that from looking at the questions that Wozniak is a person who got cheated from fame and fortune but was likely very important in the Apple company's creation and also probably a very brilliant person when it came to uh, computers, okay? So that's about the information that you want to pick up uh, from 
quickly going over these questions and then paraphrasing. So Carolina says, yes. Verdab says, yeah, I sure got that. Boomi too. Hassan, Bekjan, fantastic. So that's what you need to get from the questions, okay? Not confusion, not too much detail. You're not searching for answers, but you're getting a good idea of the passage, okay? All right. So now we read. When we read, what should we do, especially when we're practicing at home? So while we're reading, what do we really want to make sure that we're paying attention to? What is key um, while you read? I, I want you to be very aware of this, okay? So at, let me ask you this another way. Um, another way I can ask you this is, what must you do uh, to engage the information and um, practice active uh, reading so you remember the information and the order of information, okay? So what must you do? Yeah, visualize, very good. So picture it in your mind, okay? So picture the information in your mind. Okay, and as, let's be specific. So in this case, what would be a good point of view for you, the reader, to visualize from? Okay, so uh, what would be a good point of view for you here? So when you read this title, when you go over these questions and you go, okay, I'm gonna make sure that I visualize what would be a good perspective? What would be the right perspective to help you remember this? So Parmar says, read loudly at home. That's good too. Okay. Sure. What would be a good perspective here? So how should you visualize this? Okay. You want to do more than just imagine a TV show because that's not very good for us to remember. So Hassan says, sequence events with visual markers. Bekjan says, include yourself. How can you include yourself here, Bekjan? Good. So um, use visual markers to sequence. Absolutely. And include yourself. Okay, right. So how can you include yourself here? become yeah very good carolina um so carolina bang on uh, right on carolina double super huge thumbs up oh um become the man become steve wozniak yeah okay so if you imagine that you are Steve Wozniak and you're reading your life story here, I bet you're going to do a much better job remembering of what's happening. So think about it, not just like you're reading about some person, but you're reading about yourself. Cool? Okay, that makes sense, right? Very good. Uh, good critical thinking, Carolina. All right, so let's do that. As we read, visualize, become Steve Wozniak. Here we go. So read with me, students. Read with me. Here we go. So founded in 1976, Apple Computer, now Apple Inc., is one of the world's biggest companies. Whatever way biggest is measured, sales, market capitalization, cultural impact, or otherwise, Apple is top of the chart or very near the top. For decades, Steve Jobs was the face of Apple. He was the person on stage promoting the iPod, iPhone, iPad, etc. Profoundly intelligent, though he undoubtedly was, Jobs was not the brains behind Apple's technological accomplishments in the early years. Instead, it was Jobs' friend, Steve Wozniak, affectionately known as Voz, who provided much of the intellectual and technological ability 
that made Apple into an overnight success. All right, so we are Voz, Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak. All right. So far, so good. So we're the brains of the Apple company, especially in the early years. Here we go. Steve Wozniak was born in 1950 in San Jose, California, USA. Though his brilliance was clear from a young age, his geographic place of birth was a significant factor in his impact on the computing world. In 1950, San Jose was a small suburb of San Francisco with a population of under 100,000. Over the next seven decades, San Jose's population would balloon by a factor of 10 and by over 20 when taking into account the metro population. This extreme growth was not an accident. Led by companies like Apple, San Jose became the epicenter of what came to be known as Silicon Valley, the beating heart of global technological advances in the late 20th and early 21st centuries. Wozniak was gifted both intellectually and geographically. He had the intellectual ability to create and develop the devices he did, but he was also born into the exact location on the entire planet in which their development was taking hold and was valued. Okay. So again, we're visualizing, right? So I'm Vaz, I'm the brains, and hey, lucky me, I am born in San Jose, the beating heart of the technological advancement of the 20th, 21st century. How lucky uh, for me. All right. So those visual cues, and Hassan was absolutely right, we're setting these visual cues uh, to... Uh, create that systematic logical order of information so that we can be much more efficient and much faster when we're answering the questions. Okay, here we go. C. Uh, Wozniak's uh, beginning in the world of technology was his development of what he called a blue box, which enabled a user to make long distance calls at no cost. In the early 1970s, this was an incredible accomplishment. Wozniak, already together with his friend and business partner Jobs, sold over 200 of these blue boxes at a cost of $150 each, $928 in 2020. Without the profit from the blue boxes, Jobs admitted decades later there would have been no Apple. Ooh, so thanks to the blue box, we have an app, blue box, Apple. Okay. Um, again, very visual, right? So you can imagine the uh, blue box. And the blue box becomes uh, the Apple. There you go. Okay, and of course, as we know, Apple has that little bite out of it. Okay, so there we go. Uh, so again, very visual. Okay, even though the information is somewhat abstract about technology, it's quite visual. Okay, so far, so good. Here we go. And the more you practice this kind of active reading and visual reading, the better, the faster you will become. Okay. All right. Here we go. Um, D, the relationship between Jobs and Wozniak was complicated. When the video game manufacturer Atari offered $100, that's $612 in 2020, for every chip that was eliminated from the circuit board, Job, who worked at Atari at the time, offered to split the income with Wozniak if he could reduce the number of chips used in the circuit board. Wozniak did by 50. But Jobs told Wozniak Atari only awarded him 700 instead of 5,000 and gave Wozniak $350 instead of $2,500, pocketing the difference. Wozniak found out a decade later, but forgave Jobs. Oh, that Jobs, eh? <laughs> it's quite the character. All right, 
So here, again, visual, there's a bit of math. It's clear, hopefully. E. In the early to mid-1970s, Wozniak and Jobs worked out of Jobs' parents' garage on the first Apple computer. Wozniak was in charge of the technical end, while Jobs was tasked with marketing. Wozniak had gained computer development experience and expertise through the Homebrew Computer Club, a Silicon Valley group that used the Altair 8800 microcomputer do-it-yourself kit. Based on Intel's 8080 microprocessor, one of the world's first, Oh, sorry, students, I got so carried away with my reading, I forgot to boot the camera, right? Anyway, I'll give you a little bit of time to think while I restart the camera there for us and just one shake of a lamb's tail. There we go. I got so excited with this reading. Hope everybody's still with me. I saw the kind of <laughs> chat kind of stop there as well, so I'm guessing that Many of you are finding this somewhat interesting. Maybe for some of you it's familiar. Okay, uh, so let's keep going. Um, so based on uh, Intel's 8080 processor, one of the world's first, this framework would become the foundation of Apple's first computer. With money from the blue boxes, Wozniak's previous work at Hewlett Packard and the sale of Jobs' car, the two young men started Apple computer. Thanks, Carolina. All right, let's keep going. So this is obviously the start of Apple, the company, and what it took to get there, and the technology that was behind Apple computer. Okay. All right. F. Within four years, the blink of an eye in the time of an investor, Apple's value exceeded a billion dollars. That would have been a good investment. At the time, it was the fastest rise to that mark in history. In that short time, Wozniak had become a multimillionaire, and it was largely due to his development of the cutting edge and paradigm shifting Apple II computer. The Apple II broke the barrier between those people who played around with computers as a hobby and the general public. It had color graphics, an integrated programming language, basic, and an optional 5.25, five and a quarter inch external floppy drive. Every family in the early 1980s wanted an Apple computer and the value of Apple reflected this cultural value. All right, so rise of Apple to become a powerful company. Here we go. Uh, G, though Apple would go on to become one of the world's biggest companies in the coming decades, the journey was not smooth. And both Wozniak and Jobs would leave the company in the 1980s. Though Jobs would return to Apple with much fanfare amidst the production of his 21st century marvels, such as the iPhone, Wozniak would not return except in a so-called ceremonial capacity. Apple has changed markedly since Wozniak left the company in 1985. While it is difficult to draw a direct line between Wozniak's contributions to the company and, for example, the modern iPhone, it is clear that Apple would not exist in its current form without the technological brilliance that Steve Wozniak brought to the Jobs family garage so many decades ago. All right, so there is a conclusion, a summary, of course, uh, to this. Now, let's see how well we kept that visual image and how well uh, we can answer these questions without necessarily having to jump back to the text. Here we go. Uh, question number four. Information about Wozniak's youth. Which paragraph did we get that from? Number 14, I have a pretty good idea. I don't think I need to go back at all. Uh, I know that it was in the introduction. It was in the beginning. 
Hassan says A. I don't think it was A, Hassan. Remember, Hassan? A was about the brains of the company. Okay. Yeah, just a sec. I'll move the screen. Let me see. Uh, 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 uh. All right. Yeah. So the popular vote here is B. I agree. B. Uh, remember that uh, in paragraph B, uh, that's where we read about uh, paragraph A. Thought that I'm the um, brains of. Uh, okay. So it's a brain. Um, and then in paragraph B, the additional information that I got is that. Uh, I landed Dab Center in San Jose. Okay, um, as a little kid. Yay! All right. So, yeah, Musafir, that's right. B because Waz was born in the place of technological boom, right? In the 1950s. Remember, we got that information. 1950s. Okay. So. Uh, at the least, you'll know which part of the passage it's coming from, uh, which will help you if you have to look. Okay, uh, number 15, a stock price skyrockets. So the value of the stock price increases dramatically. Uh, which is that? Okay, where did that come from? So there, Apple was established. Mustafa says, I'm pretty sure... I remember seeing that in F, okay? Yeah, very nice. So uh, Musafir says, profit of Apple, um, they become millionaires. And you visualize that very well, Musafir. And good for you, it is F, okay? So the correct answer there is F. Very good. Profits of Apple becoming a billion dollar company, it was F. Very nice, good. Well, you can do this now. Um, in the official exam, so let's say you're like 99% sure. Okay. What you can do, uh, because if you're doing this um, like the turtle, where you're slow and steady and you're taking the steps, then you can say, okay, I'm like 90, 95% sure that it's F. Uh, if you're right, it only. Okay, within four years, the blink of an eye, in the time of an investor, Apple's value exceeded a billion dollars. Was the fastest rise to that mark in history. Okay, so, okay, cool, I know it's right. Now you're 100% sure. Okay, so when you're 90% sure, you can check to close that 10%. It will only take you a couple of seconds. Is that clear? Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Okay. So that one is F. Uh, number 16, learning from another company's technology. Uh, Boomy, you say my voice is cracking. I think my connection seems okay on my side. If anybody else is experiencing that, let me know. Okay. All right. Um, so 16, learning from another company's technology. Uh, we taught that was very clear. Um, it was Intel, right? So it was somewhere around C or D maybe, uh, maybe a little bit after. It was somewhere in the um, I remember... Intel. It was the Intel 8080 chip. Okay, that kind of stuck in my mind. Uh, so let's see what Intel 8080 is. That's really easy to look for, right? Oh, there it is. Look at that. I can almost match up my writing with the text there. So Intel 8080 microprocessor, right? Uh, the Altair 8080 microcomputer. Let me see if I can fix my voice crackling. Just give me a second.
Okay, um, let, if my voice is still crackling, let me know. It's uh, something that I might not have power over. Uh, so here it's E, okay? So uh, with these matching um, the, question, the statement to the paragraph, you want to think about what area in the passage, beginning, middle, or end. And you also want to think about the information because sometimes you might not remember the exact paragraph, but if you remember the information like Intel 8080, it's very, very clear, okay? All right. Okay, hang in there, hang with me. Um, I Uh, hopefully that will fix it, and then I'll switch batteries after this class, maybe. That might be it as well. Okay, um, so that was me. Okay, uh, number 17, the origins of Apple in telephone technology. Okay, let's see if that helps. Um, I kind of felt like that came um, somewhere the beginning. It was a little bit tricky. Okay, uh, Beck John says that was C. For Dobbs says that was C as well. Um, blue box, yeah. Uh, we visualize blue box very clearly, so yeah. Uh, remember what the blue box was used for? It was huge innovation at that time. Blue box, anybody remember? I thought it was really easy to remember it that way. The blue box was for, what was it used for, the blue box? Just for fun, let's see. It was really, yeah, long distance calls for free, right? Can you imagine? At that time, it cost a fortune. Okay. On here, this matching. 18, uh, Steve Jobs steals from Wozniak. Yeah, very good. Uh, Steve Jobs steals from Wozniak. I kind of remember how much as well. So Steve Jobs steals from Wozniak. Uh, where was that from, this last one here? Yeah, it's around D. Again, super easy to check uh, because it's all those numbers, right, where he didn't pay his fair share for those chips. Um, so uh, there, yeah, you can see it. So the relationship between jobs, and then it gives all these numbers, so I remember that that's D. Okay, so again, uh, when you're 90% sure, it only takes a second to confirm to 100%. Apple is one of the biggest companies in the world, though Steve something has been the face of the company. Steve what? I bet all of you can get this. I'm going to have to shrink the screen a little bit so that it all fits. There we go. Okay. Uh, jobs, very good. And uh, Mustafa, make sure that J is big, right? I know it sounds like a word, but it's a name, Jobs. So Steve Jobs has been the face of the company. It is actually Wozniak who provided a lot of the engineering and something ability. Does anybody remember without searching what the other word was? I clearly remember that. Engineering and something ability. Yeah, very good, Beck John. Intellectual. Uh, it's two L's, so he has the right spelling. Okay, intellectual ability. Okay. 
intellectual ability. Okay. Now, if you don't remember the spelling, uh, does anybody remember where that comes from? So where does this information come from? If I have to check the spelling of intellectual, where do I need to look? Which paragraph? This is what that matching paragraphs really helps me with. Okay. So which paragraph? Yeah, very good, Boomi. That was the first paragraph. Absolutely. Um, remember that was the thesis. Okay, always pay attention to the thesis. Uh, instead, it was Jobs' friend, Steve Wozniak, affectionately known as Woz, who provided much of the intellectual and technological ability that made Apple into an overnight success. So that's the thesis. Always pay special attention uh, to the thesis. Okay. All right. Okay, let's keep going. Wozniak was born at a time decades before the boom in San Jose, an area which would come to be nicknamed what? So what became the name of this place? Came to be known as, yeah, very good, Beck John, Silicon Valley. And again, you can check that spelling if you remember that was paragraph E, right? So Silicon Valley. Okay. Valley is the area between two mountain ranges, okay? Silicon is spelled S-I-L-I-C-O-N. Again, it's a name, so big S, big V, very important. Uh, Wozniak got his start in technology in the 1970s by making a device called a something that would allow for free long-distance calls. I bet everybody is going to get that now. And remember here, students, when you hear, see this word called a, uh, it's safe to write, yeah, uh, shahtaj, not black, blue. And here I would write it as blue box because it's the name of a product. So again, capitals on the Bs. Okay, so blue box, the name of a product, just like Apple. So big B, big B. Okay, Carolina? Careful with that. When you see called, okay, you're safe to write capital letters because it's going to be the name of the product. Okay, this is where if you're writing all capitals like Musafir is doing, then uh, you're on the safe side. Okay, all right, that would allow for free long distance calls. The profit from these devices was necessary so he could start something. The company that would change the world soon after. So uh, what is 23? I think all of you can get that again. What's that number 23? Yeah, very good for Dobbs, Apple. And of course, big A, right? For the same reason that uh, uh, blue box. So Apple. So one of, you know, these uh, answers, they look kind of simple, but where you have to be really careful is notice all the capitals. So capital J, capital S, capital B, capital B, capital A. So only one answer here can be all lowercase, which is this intellectual uh, ability. Okay, so this one doesn't need to be capital because it's a con um, or word. But these other ones here are all capitals, okay? So you have to be super duper careful. Musafir, I think that's a tomato, but it looks similar, okay? All right, um, Zahab, that's probably because many of the students in the class have been doing this practice a little bit longer, but when you do it more, Zahab, you will remember like everyone, okay? All right. Um, 
So we're in the final stretch here for our questions. Question 24. How much money did Steve Jobs unfairly take from Steve Wozniak? A, $1,150. B, $700. C, $2,500. Or D, uh, $350. Hassan says $2,500. No, Hassan, I no, no, it's not right. Boomi says it's A. Why is it A, Boomi? So Boomi says A is the correct answer. Why is it A, Boomi? Tell me that. Okay, so why is A correct? Bring that down a bit. So A is correct. Why is that correct? Yeah, everybody looking at Boomi's math there. So Boomi says Jobs should have given 2500 to Wozniak, but he only gave Wozniak 350 which means that he cheated Wozniak out of 2150 Okay, simple math. Uh, again, yeah, Carolina, it's a math question. That's right. Um, so sometimes in the listening and in the reading section, you have to do this kind of simple math question. Okay? Everybody clear on how Boomi got that correct answer? How Beck John got that correct answer? Okay. So the company paid them 5000 right? Split between two. Each one should have gotten 2500 for Jobs and for Waz. Okay. But Jobs only gave Waz 350 lied about the rest. Okay. All right, um, so good, good, good. So A, make sure that in the answer sheet you write A and not 2150, not 2150, okay? So careful with that. 26, complete each sentence with the correct ending below. Uh, in just a few years after the time of its founding, Wozniak's something. How can you finish the sentence uh, without looking at the choices? So in just a few years after the time of its founding, Wozniak's something. How would you finish that? Wozniak's what? According to this information that you read. Um, after the time of its founding, probably Apple is what we're talking about here. Wozniak left the company, something like that. Yeah, I think Carolina left the company. Wozniak uh, resigned, or Wozniak's work was no longer needed, or Wozniak's contributions were no longer something like that. Okay. Uh, which one? So. Uh, those contributions were plentiful in the 1980s, but the company could not have existed without him. Uh, Wozniak's net worth was over a million dollars, had created the basic programming language, had gone from a garage to multi-million dollar success. Uh, left the company is not there, so which one of these is grammatically and um, information-wise the best answer? Yeah, C. Okay, because that would be the other way. In just a few years after the time of its founding, Wozniak's uh, bank account was a million dollars. So C, correct. Okay, all right, good. And number 26, uh, there may not be an exact link from Wozniak's contributions to Apple to the company today. Um, okay. So there may not be an exact link from Wozniak's contributions to Apple to the company today, how would you finish that one on your own before looking at the choices? I would finish it with, but Apple wouldn't exist without him. OK? 
Okay, so that's that's how I would finish that, I think. Uh, so let's see. Anything there? Those contributions were plentiful in the 1980s, but the company could not have existed without him. Oh, that's an exact match. So when you have an exact match, just pick it. Yeah, Beckjohn, very good. So Beckjohn says Apple would not exist. Okay, so just remember, students, uh, this is a review for some of you and for some of our newer members. This is new information. Uh, when you're doing this kind of multiple choice, because this is a type of multiple choice, the trick is the same as with all multiple choice questions. Think about the answers on your own first, then choose the correct one. Okay, so is that clear, everybody? So it doesn't matter. There are lots of different kinds of multiple choice questions in the IELTS. And if some of you take the TOEFL exam, uh, TOEFL has the same. So TOEFL is all multiple choice, but there are many kinds of multiple choice questions in TOEFL as well, not just one kind. So anytime you do a multiple choice exam, read the question, think about it carefully, Think about the answer and then search for the answer, not the other way. Okay, don't look at the answers first. All right, um, so uh, members, just one last question for me. How is my voice now? Can you hear me okay? I reset the audio there uh, in the blink of an eye. Did you hear crackling in the last 10 minutes or was it clear? Because I'm not going to play around with it in the 30 minutes. So in the last 10 minutes, did my voice crack or was it okay? Okay, Carolina says it was better. Ferdov says it was okay. All right, so no cra that means no crackling, Carolina, or just kind of better? Okay, perfect. Super. Glad to hear it. Okay, um, let's keep this energy going, everyone. So take a 30-minute break, uh, eat a sandwich, have a cup of tea, um, or as the British say, take a cup of tea, <laughs> and um, come back in 30 minutes, and we'll do another reading uh, which will have different kinds of questions. It will be the third uh, passage from exam nine, which will, of course, be the more challenging one. So come back for it. Zahab, fantastic to have you in the class too. Keep it going. All right, everyone. Uh, remember, for lots more practice, use our websites, aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com uh, for general, hopefully, uh, you've checked that out, um, and I will be back in 30 minutes, and everybody will be able to join the chat for this next reading. Uh, thanks so much. See you soon. Bye for now.